Okay. Well then, uh, thank you everyone for uh, coming out to uh, the first discrete seminar of uh, the semester here. Um, we're very happy to have uh, Arvind Giori from the Rennie, um, the Alfred Rennie Institute of Mathematics. Um, <laughs> I apologize about <laughs> if I mispronounced your name, by the way. But um, we're very happy to have you come out from the uh, Alfred Rennie uh, Institute of Mathematics to uh, kick off the seminar and uh, talk about hexagon free planar graphs. So please uh, take us away. Thank you very much. First of all, I am very uh, honored to, uh, to give a talk in Colombia, let me say. Uh, just one remark. Okay, I'm checking. Okay, it works. I'm just. Uh, Actually, I gave a talk, if I remember well, 23 years ago in Colombia. Lots of do you remember that I visited you in 99? It was a talk, but I don't remember then. It was long ago. You were at Vanderbilt, I think. Yes, I, 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 yes, I drove there from, uh, from there. It was 99 spring. More precisely, I do not know. I know the semester. And I would like to keep this habit. Uh, I hope you too that you you invite me in the, uh, after 23 years again, and I will give a talk after 23 years again. What well, do you think? Can we do that? Let's see. It would be nice. Uh, we will be. I will be 90. You will be just close to it. Okay. More seriously, uh, I would like to speak of hexagon planar graphs today. Uh, this is. Uh, an extremal graph is subject, but not the usual one. Of course, if I see hexagon free graphs, hexagon free graphs, uh, then of course you do know that. But no, I would like to uh, to speak of planar graphs. I mean, uh, extremal planar graphs problems a little bit. Okay, of course, if you are speaking of planar graphs, then you have to say, you have to uh, remember uh, Euler's theorem. It is a uh, very young theorem. It says that the planar graph of n vertices has at most three n minus six edges. Actually, it was just a consequence of the Euler's formula. And if you like, you can call it extremal graph theory. But to tell the truth, if you want to make it really extremal graph theory, then you have to uh, use Kuratovsky theorem from 1930. Uh, this theorem says that the graph is planar if and only if it doesn't contain any subdivision of K5 or k 3 or if you like topological. There are some other versions, but no, I use just one version. And the point is that it means that if a graph doesn't contain something, namely a subdivision of K5 or k 3 t then we can uh, determine the maximum number of edges of an n-vertex graph. So this, to tell that us, it is quite normal that this is extreme graph, so, but somehow, uh, nothing happened for a long while in, in this direction. Somewhat later, which means 1979, uh, Hakimi and Schmeichel proved the following, that the number of triangles in a planar graph of n vertices is at most 3n minus 8, and we have infinitely many extremal cases. I do not want to speak of it anymore. Uh, or another thing is that the number of four cycles in a planar graph of n vertices, n is at least five, then uh, the, this number is at most n squared plus three n minus 22 over two. Of course, it's not a classical ex extremal result because here we are speaking of the number of triangles, number of four cycles. But if I mention this, then let me mention one thing which was open. Uh, I mean, they left open uh, together with my uh, students, uh, Paulos, uh, Salia, and Zamora. Tompkins was not my student, but he was a student of Katona. Uh, so they do not seem to be Hungarian, but these are five Hungarian authors in some sense. I mean, they studied in Hungary. So anyhow, uh, we proved, uh, it hasn't appeared yet, that if n is greater than or equal to it, uh, then the number of five cycles in a planar graph is at most 2n squared minus 10n plus 12. Which, uh, and in this way, we solved the uh, problem of Hakim and Schmeichel. Okay, uh, here there are two very special graphs. I do not want to speak of them. Uh, this one and this one. But the main point is that here we have infinitely many graphs which have this property. Uh, it can be checked 
not so easy to count, but uh, I mean, not extremely complicated, but it is not 100% obvious that the number of five cycles is exactly this number. Urban, are you referring to, to graphs on your, uh, on your slides? Yes, you do not see it? I, I see your title slide still. No, we don't see anything. My goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I see your title slide. That's all I see. I don't know if that's what but, everyone. Uh, okay, then maybe I drew the graph. Uh, if I draw, do you see it? I think you see it. Can you try uh, maybe running your slideshow? That might uh, that might make it so that we see. I the... have no idea what we have to. I, I see it, of course, but I do not know why you you do not, do not see it. Do you know what should I do? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Laszlo, you're muted. The, the idea of that it is. Igen, azt én értem, de, de mit kell csinálni vele? Rá klikkelni. Klikkelj rá. És valami elindítást lehetne ott mondani, azt én nem tudom, hogy, hogy nem látom, mint látsz. My goodness. Uh... Ha ez nem akar működni, akkor az alsó sorban a megjegyzések után van négy kis ikon, a negyediket nyom meg, az működhet. De az is, ha elklikkel egyszerűen a következő szlájdra a oldalon. Uh, you didn't see any slides till now? We just need your, see your title page. The so, very first page, my goodness. Próbálja elklikkelni a második képe a baloldali oszlopban. Igen, csak nem tudok, because, because it doesn't come up. So try to reshare, maybe it will fix it. So close PowerPoint and share again. What do you see now? Nothing changed. My goodness. Did you click the PowerPoint? Uh, yes, I of course I click. Sometimes it happened. Uh, Somewhere on your on your screen is probably the Zoom message that says it's like in red. It says stop sharing. Maybe try that and then try resharing. So if I click on uh, uh, this sharing, then what will happen? It will be the same. Well, you're sharing something right now because we still see your original PowerPoint. So you need to stop sharing first. Okay, I, uh, I start sharing it again. Okay. My goodness, I didn't try it. I cannot do anything. I, no, it is absolutely died because no, I cannot do anything either. So when you click share screen, what do you see? No. Actually, I, I think my Zoom was lost. You're still here for on our end. We see you. Yes, you. but uh, how is it? I see post and then post attendee Zoom, which is not the normal Zoom. I'm afraid of that. No, I restarted.
Okay, we see your, your PowerPoint now. And yes, then... but if I start with the other details, do you see it now? Uh, interesting. So it looks like, so we still see the original one. So I think the slideshow that you opened is probably opening in a new window. Um, I'm not sure. That doesn't usually happen though, does it? Uh, do you see this at least? No, it is. Uh, no, no, we don't. Okay, you don't so, see anything? Yeah, now, now we see. Click on the second uh, slide. Yeah, I can see it now too. Yeah, yeah, uh, just it is not a uh, slideshow. Okay, so don't try the other details, try the a megjegyzések mellett. A negyedik gombot üsd meg. Where are the megjegyzések? Alul, alul, alul. Igen. A mellett a negyedik gombot. Ne a megjegyzéseket üsd meg, ott van, van négy ikon mellett, a negyediket üsd meg. Igen, igen. Próbáld meg azt. Igen, most megütöttem. És most látta, látjátok? Nem látjuk. Ott van egy olyan ötletem, hogy ö, hagyd abba a screenshot, indíts. Te igen, most én nem látom. Ne szóljál bele, Laci. Uh, uh, this is not the slideshow, but actually this is, the, uh, this is what you can see also, and this is enough. Is it okay? Yeah, this is okay. If I do, this if, if I do it in this way. That's fine. You don't have any animations or anything, right? Uh, no, I will not have any animation, but it is not so important. Okay. Um, that's if, this, that's if this works for you, then I think that'll work for us. Okay. Sorry for it. I do not know what was it. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. So anyhow, uh, this is the theorem what we proved that the number of five cycles in a in a. Uh, Planar graph is at most 2n squared minus 10n plus 12. And then, uh, actually, these graphs are the sharp examples. Of course, this is the interesting example. Uh, because uh, this is infinitely many, these two are just very special cases. OK, and. Uh, <clears throat> the next is a very similar, similar result that the maximum number of passes of length three in a planar graph is at most, it can be determined seven n squared minus 32 n plus 27. Uh, I think this is the same class of, same uh, collection of authors. And uh, uh, with some other people, uh, with Deborah Rungos, Ryan Martin, Paulos, uh, Adisu Paulos, Nikasalia, John Kixiao and Zamora, again, most of them except Ryan Martin is my, uh, uh, but the others are my students. We proved that the maximum number of passes of length four in a planar graph, and this is interesting that we couldn't determine it uh, just uh, asymptotically, it is n cubed plus some error term. And actually this is the graph uh, which has that many uh, passes of length four. Uh, and one more result of this type, which is because it is very interesting too, uh, together with uh, Oliver Janser and my students, we proved that uh, if I have a planar graph of n vertices, then the number of induced pentagons is at most n squared over three plus little n. And now I would like, well, this is the problem that uh, you will see some other things which are not so important here. Uh, uh, to run theorem, if a graph does so now I would like to uh, turn to, cl to classical extremal results. I'm sorry if you can see something which is uh, not for you, but because it is not a uh, slide, so that's why it is here. Uh, so anyhow, uh, everybody knows to run theorem. If a graph doesn't contain KR as a subgraph, then the number of edges is at most the number of edges in the Turan graph, and equally, equality holds only if and only if the, this is the Turan graph, and the Turan graph, this is what everybody knows, uh, R minus one classes of vertices, and they are as equal as possible, and uh, they are joined uh, to each other if and only if they belong to distinct classes. And one more extreme result, Bondi Shimovich, it is one of my favorite results that the number of edges in a uh, 
tukje cycle free graph that most anti the one plus one over k times a constant but we do not know how sharp it is i mean that we do know that it is sharp uh, at least apart from the constant for k equals three k equals two three and five okay and now i would like to continue uh, with uh, <laughs> Classical extremal problems in planar graphs. Classical means that not generalized to run number, but really we would like to determine the maximum number of edges in a graph in a planar graph which doesn't contain something. Of course, in this case, there is no such a problem like in in in, in the problem uh, of even cycles. Of, the order of magnitude is always linear, so there is no problem like that. Of course, the constant will be important. And you could say that maybe that's why this uh, planar extrema graph for lamps are not too interesting. In some sense, uh, you're right that, but this is not a good question for planar graphs. First of all, uh, it doesn't mean that the constant, uh, to determine the constant coefficient of n is not interesting. And the other thing is that somehow uh, the constructions will be pretty interesting. So this is what I would like to define. The planar to run number of a graph H is X P referring to the fact that this planar and H is the maximum number of edges in a planar graph on N vertices, which doesn't contain H as a subgraph. Okay, if you would like to do two runs theorem, then it, it will not be a too interesting thing. As I said that if the graph doesn't contain any triangle, then it is easy to see just using the ILS formula that uh, the number of edges is at most two n minus four for uh, already it is true for k to n minus two and uh, not, nothing is interesting. And the next case already that if you forbid k four, if the graph doesn't contain any a click of four vertices, then uh, the maximum number of edges is uh, at most three n minus six. And this graph again is the extreme case. Of course, it is easy to check that it, uh, doesn't contain uh, any uh, K4. And of course, it's a triangulated graph. So the number of edges is exactly three and minus six. And if you would like to continue, then, then of course, it is even more nonsense. Uh, for K5, actually, a planar graph doesn't contain a K5. So there is no theory here. Maybe that's why uh, nothing happened for a while. Uh, and to tell the truth, just in 2015, Dowden initiated the study of classical to run type problem when the host graphs are planar and we would like to study this extremal number. Okay. Uh, he proved that uh, a planar graph which doesn't contain any C4 has at most 15 times n minus two over seven edges, uh, if n is at least four. Uh, and for C5, we have a similar number, 12 n minus 33 over five. We need some uh, uh, lower bound. The first case, it is trivial, but the second is a little bit less natural that for small n, it is not true. Of course, it is not so surprising because uh, if n is very small, if you have just few vertices, then, then this planarity condition is weak. Uh, it will be more interesting if we have more and more vertices. So any, but anyhow, uh, if n is large, then both inequalities are sharp, at least for infinitely many values of n. So this was uh, the theorem of Dowden. And now I would I arrive at the subject of this talk, hexagon free planar graphs. It was 2019 when Lan, Shi, and Song proved that if I have a n-vertex planar graph, which doesn't contain any C6, any hexagon, then the number of edges is at most 18 times n minus two over seven. And this is true for all uh, n at least six, and we have equality when n is equal to nine. Okay, but uh, we have this case when n is equal to nine, but to tell that we do not have the general case. So now I would like, uh, to state the main cell and what I would like to speak of today, that we proved uh, that if G is a C6 free plan, a plane graph or planar graph on at least 18 vertices, we, have, we need this condition. Then the number of edges is uh, much less uh, the, uh, or 
somewhat less than the estimate above. Here we have 18 over seven, and here we have five and five over two. So actually the number of edges is at most five and over two minus seven. So this is the theorem what I would like to speak of. To tell the truth, what I would like to prove is a somewhat different statement. Uh, of, uh, if G is two connected and C63, uh, and all the degrees are at least uh, three, so the minimum degree is at least three, then the number of edges is at most. It's one. To tell that to the second state uh, condition is not so important. Uh, if you have a vertex of degree two, then you can delete it. Uh, just somehow, uh, this is nice to have this condition sometimes technically. But this is not an important thing. Two connected, this is important because uh, we will see that we will have some trouble uh, when the graph is not too connected. But before I speak of this problem, before hexagons, I would like to go back to the Pentagon reconstruction. I mentioned the Pentagon theorem. And OK, I will not explain this picture, but uh, they have this kind of uh, grid and then they make some modification you can see what happens in the middle or if you cannot see then it is not a big problem because i do not want to speak of it uh, maybe i would like to speak of this no it is even more complicated so again uh, the operation is that somewhere in the middle uh, these two vertices are replaced with some other graph and then uh, we iterate this and then we get uh, more and more complicated graphs. You can find it in the paper. I do not want uh, to present it. I do not want to understand it either because I suppose that something is wrong with this construction. Okay, I mean, it is, the construction is perfect, just I couldn't imagine that there is no simpler construction. Okay, now I would like to show a simpler construction just for the Pentagon free planar graphs. Of course, here I have a pentagon free planar graph. This is the hexagonal grid, wonderful. But then what we do is the following. Uh, on every edge, uh, oops, I didn't want to do this. Okay, so here, well, if I touch it, then it will move. I do not want to do that. Anyhow, uh, you might remember how it was done. Uh, so here, every vertex uh, was, so here this is better. So uh, here every vertex uh, remain there, but every edge is uh, halved. I take a middle vertex uh, on each edge, and then around every vertex, I uh, uh, draw a key four. And then it is quite clear to see that uh, it doesn't contain uh, a five cycle. And then the question is, what can we say about uh, this graph? Uh, it has roughly 12 and over five edges. I'm sorry, the, uh, it, uh, it is moved. And if you finitize uh, this construction and draw the boundary smartly, then you can get exactly 12 and minus 33 over five edges. So there exists a much nicer uh, pentagon free construction. Uh, it is not a, uh, not a uh, iterative construction or whatever. Actually, it is coming from the hexagonal grid. Uh, and now I would like to speak of the hexagon free construction, which will be somewhat similar, but here I definitely have to mention uh, a story what I heard from uh, Jerry Alakes. Uh, unfortunately, he died relatively young. I mean, he was 61 young, and he worked together with Paul Erdős. And then they arrived at some point that, okay, this is a very nice theorem, and then, uh, uh, this, uh, it is clear that this uh, serum, that the serum that they proved is sharp uh, for the pentagonal grid. I mean that uh, we have to use regular pentagons. And then uh, Yuri Alek has said that, Uncle Paul, 
uh, we do not have a hexagon, uh, we do not have pentagonal grid. So, so what does it mean? And then Ernest said that that's why we have to construct it. If it exists, then we do not have to construct it. Uh, so we and then they uh, constructed a pentagonal grid, whatever it means. I do not want to mention it now. Uh, but uh, sometimes this is really the point that uh, uh, we have to create something which is which doesn't exist. What happened here? Oh no, we are back to the. Uh, so we have to construct a, a heptagonal grid, uh, but I will show it later. Something this has changed uh, now. Anyhow, uh, first I would like to. Uh, I am repeating uh, this theorem again, and unfortunately, in this technical condition, because otherwise it is not true. It is not true for small n. In this case, if we have this technical condition, then it is true for n greater than or equal to six. And why is it so? We have this very simple graph. We have n vertices, uh, and uh, which is five in this case. And the number of edges is nine, which is five and over two minus 3.5, which is too many. We would like to have a minus seven here. And of course you can continue. For example, if you put together three copies of them, then N is equal to 13 and E is the number of edges is 27, which is still five and over two minus 5.5. So it is still too many. So we, these examples are counter examples to the general upper bound. Uh, and that's why we would like to, because we would like to avoid this, uh, uh, this uh, examples, that's why we have to assume that the graph is too connected. And now I would like to speak of the heptagonal grid, but I would like to construct. Uh, the trick is the following, that we, have, we take the hexagonal grid and uh, we take, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that. So here uh, we have uh, these edges and uh, in each hexagon, we consider the same edge, the bottom right edge, and we put a halving vertex on this. And then in a smart way, I consider just three rows. You can consider if you like several rows and then you can connect the upper and lower vertices in a, a smart way. And then we have 10K plus seven vertices uh, in this graph if you have, uh, if the length of this grid is roughly k, and then, uh, or or there is one more choice. If you have, uh, if you would, you can delete five vertices which are in this uh, red uh, set, and you can add this red edge, and then it is also a similar example. And then what we do is the following, and this is uh, more interesting. You remember that what did we do in the case of the uh, pentagons? If we had a vertex of degree three, then it was replaced uh, by a K4. But in this case, it is not dense enough. So uh, rather what we would like to do, if I have a vertex of degree three, then here, instead of a K4, a K5 minus is put here. What is a K5 minus? Uh, one edge is missing from the K5 because K5 is not planar. I would like to make it planar. And then here, this K5 minus is put into the, uh, uh, this will replace this vertex. Don't forget that we have this halving vertices. Or if I have a vertex of degree two, this is the problem that in the hexagonal grid, there is no vertex uh, of degree two, but in this, let me call it heptagonal grid, we have vertex of degree two and we do the same. Uh, uh, we use these two vertices, and then still we put this K5 minus, minus uh, okay. And then uh, we take this grid, and uh, we take this graph, and then uh, embedding this K5 minus pieces, <coughs> excuse me, and then we get N equals 36K minus 28, So this is the number of vertices and uh, the number of edges is exactly 90K plus 63. 
I skipped that computation, but it is easy to check. Okay, so this is the construction. Uh, the second is basically the same, just uh, uh, we delete these five vertices and we do the same. And then we will have a construction when n is equal to 18k uh, plus 10. And now I would like to speak of the proof. Not because it is simple. Uh, actually, the proof is more than 20 pages. So if you have time, I can tell you. No, to tell the truth, I cannot tell you. I don't remember for the details. But uh, at least I would like to, uh, to explain what happens because uh, the basic idea is, is, I think it is pretty interesting. Of course, in the applications, uh, it is very, very technical. We need a very special uh, concept, or maybe not so special, anyhow, triangular block. What is a triangular block? A triangular block is nothing else, just we take a plane graph and we take a, an arbitrary edge. If E, this edge E is not contained in any tree phase, uh, then we, uh, we could not triangle, be careful, tree phase, then we call it a trivial triangular block. Otherwise, recursively, we construct a triangular block in the following way. Start uh, with, uh, with this edge, and if there is a triangle containing it, uh, there is a bounded tree face more precisely counting, uh, containing it, then these other two edges are added uh, to, the, to this edge. And then I take another edge, E prime, in this graph, and I search for an, another bounded tree face containing E prime. And if we have, then we add these edges. Maybe sometimes it is just one edge because maybe we use two edges. Anyhow, th this tree face is added to uh, the edge set of edge, and so on. We repeat it uh, uh, as long as we can. And uh, finally, uh, we obtain a maximal uh, subgraph, and this is what we call a triangular block, and this is uh, what we call BE. It is easy to check that if, uh, it doesn't matter what edge is the starting point in this block, it will be the same, uh, we will get the same triangular block. Uh, okay. Maybe it was a little bit complicated, so immediately I would like to explain what happens here. So what kind of triangular blocks do we have in the construction? Please notice that nothing else, just k5 minuses. So actually, these are the only triangular blocks uh, in the construction. Uh, unfortunately, we have much, much more uh, different types of triangular blocks, but it is easy to see that it, they cannot be too big. Uh, and the main idea of the proof is the following. Uh, but we would like to prove that the number of edges is at most 5n over 2 minus 7. But if we use Euler's formula, this is equivalent to this inequality that 7 times f, this is the number of faces, plus 2n minus 5e, this is less than or equal to 0. This is what we would like to prove. And this is what we would like to prove, let me say, uh, triangular block wise. So we Co compute more or more precisely estimate the contribution of each triangular block to this uh, function 7f plus 2n minus 5e. Look at this triangular block what we have in the construction. Suppose it, uh, it, it is put uh, to replace a vertex of degree 3. Then look at this, uh, this triangular block with this 3, I call it lex. What is the number of edges? This is the easiest part. We have nine edges here, no problem in this block. What is uh, the number of vertices in this block? Not the number of vertices, the contribution to the, num to the number of vertices in the graph. What is n of b? Here we have these two middle vertices, this is two. And here we have three vertices uh, in this outer triangle. And then uh, the contribution of this vertice is at least one half, because here I have another block where I have this red edge, this is a block. Maybe we have more uh, blocks than the contribution is not one half, but one third or one fourth. In this construction, it's exactly one half. So it is at most, or in this construction, it's precisely two plus three halves. And what is the contribution to the number of faces? 
Here, if I have this triangular block, then inside it contains five blocks, this is five faces. And then outside, here we have these three uh, edges, and on the, this is outside we have a face, but this face cannot be, a, cannot be bounded by a short cycle. Uh, no six cycle, no five cycle, no four cycle, whatever, no triangle because it's a triangular block, but not even, uh, so it means that here we have at least a seven cycle and the contribution of this uh, three edge uh, of, of, of uh, this triangular block to the faces is one over seven, one over seven, one over seven, and we take it three times. And then, uh, My goodness, it is getting worse and worse. Do you see it? No, I, I cannot. I cannot open it. I lost it. Okay. Yeah, we just see the same. The gray screen, I think that you're. Yes, seeing. I know what you see, but <laughs> it is, this is not what I would like to show you. For a second, it disappeared. Okay, yes, here it is. Uh, no, here is the uh, uh, the other version. If uh, if I have uh, this five side uh, this uh, block and we, it has just two legs, you remember we, we placed it uh, to replace a vertex of degree two, two. Then in this case, the computation will be different, but uh, it is easy to see that again, it is seven plus two and minus five is at most uh, zero. But what happens in this case? Uh, actually, there is a trick here. The number of edges is nine. This is clear. The contribution to the number of vertices, these two middle vertex, middle vertices, this is two. Two vertices uh, has contribution one half, one half. And here the upper vertex, because there is no other block here, this contribution is one again. So the contribution to the number of vertices is three times one, this, uh, this three uh, vertices on the vertical line, plus two times one half. And what is the contribution uh, uh, to the faces? Here below, we can have an at, mo at most a seven gone. So this is one over seven. On the other hand, uh, here we have five faces, but to tell the truth, we can have just one seven gone on this side. So it is one over seven on this side too. We cannot have, uh, a seven gone here and a seven gone here, because here this is a vertex of degree one. So actually the contribution to the uh, number of faces is two over seven, one over seven below. And these two edges together contribute uh, just one over seven because uh, we have this joining edge. So here we can have just at most a seven gone, and then it is just one over seven of this seven gone. So this is a little bit tricky. Uh, but it can be done. And this is the trick that actually what we compute, this is the contribution uh, to the triangular blocks of, uh, uh, to, the, to this uh, function, seven F plus two and minus five E. And here, uh, there are some blocks. Here are the first two cases what I mentioned short uh, in the picture. Here I have how many, five other types uh, of blocks. No, I, I have a bad news. Not just this five, we have, I don't know how many, but a lot of other blocks. For each of them, we have a similar computation. Sometimes uh, the proof is even more complicated and even more, it is not enough because for example, this kind of problems can arise. Here I have this block in the middle, this uh, two triangles uh, sharing an edge. This is one block, this is B and we have four outer blocks, B1, B2, B3, B4. They are trivial blocks, they are just one edges. Uh, and in this case, the trick doesn't work. Uh, however, if I compute uh, the contribution of these five blocks together, then this is correct. What is this block in the middle? Here uh, we have five edges. 
what is the contribution to the number of uh, vertices? Here I have two vertices, this is two. And because here I have three blocks, B1, B2, and B, quite similarly here, it is one third plus one third. So the contribution uh, to the number of vertices is at most two plus two over three. Uh, and what is the contribution of uh, uh, this block to the faces? Here I have two faces inside. And unfortunately here, we cannot see one over seven, one over seven, just the opposite. We can see that here we have a quarter. We cannot have a triangle because then the block will be bigger. So it is uh, one over four, four times. And uh, this is it. So this is four over four. And if you add up, then it is seven F plus two minus five, this is four third, which is not less than or equal to zero. However, if I take this block and B1, B2, B3, B4 together, so these five blocks, then look at the contribution of B1. It is just one edge, it's a trivial block, so the number of edges is one. Uh, what is the contribution uh, to the vertices? Here I have two blocks at least, so it is one half. Here I have three blocks at least, so it is one third. Uh, oh no, no, here uh, we cannot have that. This is the this is the whole. Here we use that the graph is has minimum degree three, so we would like to avoid this technicality. So actually, it is one set, one set. Here we must have something. Here we must have something. Otherwise, the vertex of degree two. So the contribution uh, of bi to the number of vertices is two over three. And quite similarly, the faces can be here inside. We can have a four going, it is one over four. Uh, and uh, on the other side, we can have one over five. We can have a five gone. We cannot have another four gone because then we have a six cycle. Uh, so this is how we count. And then in this case, uh, we, ob we obtain again that 7f plus 2n minus 5e is negative 31 over 60. So it is better than what we expect. But anyhow, it can be estimated pretty well. Uh, and this kind of tricks, really plenty of tricks like that. Now, this kind of tricks are just few, uh, but uh, to prove that we, uh, our list of triangular blocks is complete, etc., this is a very technical thing. So this is what makes the proof pretty technical. But the main idea is once more that uh, we consider the contribution uh, of the triangular blocks to this function. And we, it is always less than or equal to zero. Or more precisely, it is not true. Uh, here you can see that sometimes it is not less than or equal to, uh, where is it? Here we have this, for example, we have a similar case here that this is one half and then we have to find out something else. So anyhow, uh, then we consider the neighbor, neighboring blocks too, and then together with these blocks. So we actually we consider a partition of the blocks and this is the proof. But once more, the, the, uh, the good idea is that we consider the contributions to this function. This function is nice because it is homogeneous, so we can add them up easily. And, uh, and this is how we can prove it. Okay, so this was the, not the sketch of the proof, but the idea of the proof. And now I would like to mention just a couple of things. The general conjecture that uh, if k is at least seven, but at most 10, then we do hope uh, that if n is large enough, then the number of edges is at most three times k minus one times n over k minus some constant. And we would uh, actually the construction will be similar. You remember that uh, in the C53 construction, we put k fives, k, k fours uh, to replace the vertices. In this construction, k five minuses, if, if k is bigger, then, then actually maybe a six vertex maximum planar graph can be put there or, or a seven vertex, it depends on k. And then in this way, this is uh, what we can conjecture that, the, that uh, it is true that uh, 
And this is the best construction. Why do we have this condition for that k is less than or equal to 10? Because uh, if k is more than 10, then of course, uh, maybe we can use some 10 vertex uh, maximal planar graph, but the question is, do we have a, a Hamilton cycle? So sometimes if, we, if uh, bigger planar graphs, planar graphs are put there, but we do not create a short, I'm sorry, not a short, a, a, a long uh, cycle. There is no Hamilton cycle. For example, the number of vertices is, is 12 and then, uh, but there is no 12 cycle there, then actually uh, uh, this can be used. So probably this is true of up to k equals 10, but then we have to modify even the conjecture and maybe the construction too. Uh, and to tell the truth, uh, this is a, I, I do not want to say that uh, it is an easy problem. It's an almost hopeless uh, uh, way to prove it because the number of blocks will be more and more, and this is extremely complicated, but at least we have a con uh, construction, take a plane graph with all faces of length k plus one, and uh, uh, with all vertices having degree three or two, you remember this is what we can have, and replace each vertex with a maximum planar graph of k vertices. So this was the construction, and uh, uh, and then we are in big trouble because this proof might be used, but it is extremely complicated. So we uh, we started uh, to prove k equals seven but it was so long that uh, and so complicated that we stopped it. So that's all what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm sorry for this technical problem. So I do not know what happened. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, if everyone could thank Irvin in some way. <laughs> uh, and uh, are there any speaker, oh, sorry, are there any questions for our speaker? <laughs> Erwin, you mentioned the bound for four path three planar graphs. Is there a conjecture for k path three planar graphs? Uh, this is interesting why it is so complicated. Uh, I don't remember uh, if there is any conjecture. Probably there is, but, but I do not remember now. I'm sorry. Uh, but it is surprisingly more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but the conjecture, what is the conjecture? Just a second. Uh, I didn't think about the generalized to run number. I'm sorry, I don't remember for the conjecture, uh, but I can. Uh, in that paper, what I mentioned, uh, this is available on archive, and I'm sure that uh, we wrote up the conjecture, but we, we couldn't prove it. Or maybe that I'm sorry, I don't remember. This, I'm a little bit suspicious that maybe I don't remember for the construction because we do not have a nice construction. I'm sorry, I don't, simply I don't remember. Um, are there um, any other questions for our speaker? Um, I have a quick question. Uh, on your very last slide, I think it was the last one, you had said that you know you have the bound or you have the conjectured bound up to um, k equals 10. And uh, I'm not sure if I fully understood the reasoning, but my question more so is if you were to pass k equals 10, do you think that there is a similar bound or do you know uh, anything about anything about that? So what happened here in the construction, let me go back to this. Uh, the vertices are replaced by k5 minus uh, or, or earlier a k4. If, for example, if you have uh, k equals seven, so there is no seven cycle, then here you would like to put a six vertex maximum planar graph, which is perfect. And then if you put them together in a similar way, that like in the hexagonal grid, but it's another grid, uh, it contains vertices of degree two, then it will be okay. 
And this is the conjecture for k equals seven, for example. But this construction doesn't work because after a while, uh, you can use not just uh, maximal planar graphs. Here, for example, for k5 minus, this is, I think it's a unique planar graph. However, uh, if k is bigger than this maximal uh, planar graph with say k equals 12 vertices or 11 vertices is not unique. And then if you use, uh, for k equals 12, you use, uh, a graph which doesn't contain a Hamilton cycle, then there is no 12 cycle here. So actually uh, in the 12 cycle free construction, you can use 12 vertex uh, maximum planar graphs here. Okay. This is the phenomenon which is changing that uh, at the beginning, there is no problem. K4 has a, a Hamilton cycle, this K5 minus has a Hamilton cycle, However, if, N, if K is large, then there exists some K vertex graph, which is maximal planar, and still it doesn't contain a Hamilton cycle. Of course, not just the Hamilton cycle is important. After a while, the question will be, what is the longer cycle, what it contains? But this is a, a very difficult direction. At the beginning, it will be okay, but anyhow, it makes the, uh, uh, the problem different. So the general conjecture will not work. I mean, the general conjecture is that we have this structure that replaces each vertex with a maximum planar graph of k vertices. If the maximum planar graph of k vertices doesn't contain a k cycle, uh, k, k plus one vertex doesn't contain a k plus one cycle, then you can use that one too. To tell that, be careful, here we have length k plus one, so which is forbidden, this is the K plus one cycle. So there is a shift here, sorry. But anyhow, the main point is that uh, what cycles do appear in this maximum planar graph what we embed, and uh, this will change uh, the construction. Does it make any sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay. And yeah, let me just... Uh... <clears throat> Let me just ask uh, one last time, are there any questions for our speaker before we end? All right, well, thank you very much. Um, thanks for uh, working through all the, uh, you know, the technical difficulties there. Um, and, uh, I think I really appreciate it. And, I'm sorry um, for that. Say again? I, I'm sorry for that. Sometimes it happens. And the main problem is that I do not understand what happens in these cases. <laughs> it's okay. I, I mean, that when I'm organizing a, a seminar, then, uh, then this problem sometimes occurs and somehow finally, we, luckily we, we can solve it. But uh, this was the worst case when I was the speaker that I couldn't solve <laughs> it. Yeah, it's okay. I think we all, we all got the, the whole talk still, so. That worked out well. <laughs> um, so thank you again, and, and thank you for, for coming out. And I know it's it's later later where you are, almost nine thirty now. So.